Hi, I am Shaquita Graham from ateco.teachable.com, and I am here with the lovely Nomalanga Mashali Moses of SuccessfulBlackWoman.com. How are you, Noma? I'm doing great, Shaquita. How are you? I'm doing great as well. We have an exciting topic today. We're going to view a, a really interesting clip from Muhammad Ali's movie uh, that was filmed in 1977 called The Greatest. It has amazing takeaways. I don't think this topic can ever be exhausted. And, you know, Muhammad Ali speaks very well for himself, so I'm just going to shut up and play the clip, and then we'll talk about it. One second. Let me share my screen here. And it is not on my screen. One moment. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, here is Muhammad Ali in this clip. I was in New York last week uh, with uh, Malcolm X. He mm -hmm. visited a mosque of the uh, Nation of Islam there. You have two black Muslim security guards in your camp and Muslim women doing your cooking. Why? I don't understand. Which means why? I don't import no more. I'm going to accept the Islamic faith. Malcolm X is a brother, friend of mine, and I have cooking who I want to cook. Malcolm X, you why not just Malcolm X? I can go where I want with Malcolm, Malcolm X. Why and not? His family are your guests. Here That's right. Life. So why? What about it? He's a black. Well, He's I, my uh, brother. Listen. He's my friend. Listen to me. I can do I want, what I want. I want why am I expecting wait a minute, you about uh, Wait a minute. Listen, listen, listen. 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 I want you to fire the guards and the cooks, persuade Malcolm X to get out of town, and go on radio and TV tonight and tell the American people, tell them that you have no connection with the Muslims. Why? Just because of the fight? Just because I'm going to make some money? You think I'm going to deny the Muslim faith, which I love and I'm going to accept? You think I'm going to deny Elijah Muhammad, the great leader for the black people of America? You think I'm going to deny the friendship with Malcolm X? You're not a Martin, Michael? Yeah. I'm going to be one. Well, I'm going to tell you something. You're not one yet. You'll make over $400,000 in this fight. I plus the chance. Oh, you're making money. 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 You're making well, that's no concession at all. You're not giving up a thing. Either you make this announcement to the public or the fight's off, and you'll never get another chance. Is that why I'm here? You want me to that's make an announcement? Right. 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 I'm not announcing right now right. unless you tell me what you're going to do. I'm going to tell you what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to announce so I'm really I already said that. I'm not going to announce it. I'm not going to announce it. I'm not going to announce it. I'm not going to announce I love it. Nama, what were you thinking? Um, well, you know, um, you know, some years ago, I think it was about five years ago, um, I first be became acquainted with uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins. Uh, he was a professor at Syracuse uh, University in Syracuse, New York, and I was a, a college professor as well at a local college here in Boston. And I remember having that conversation about how much both of us wanted to fire our bosses. Um, you know, the good news is that we did, although it wasn't as dramatic as that. Um, so it's always interesting to me when I see somebody who can stand up to their boss, because it reminds me that uh, we have to position ourselves to always be ready to fire our bosses. And um, I, really, I really don't have judgment about people working if that's what people need to do to feed their families, I have no judgments about that. I just think that even while you're working a job, you should always be ready, or at least getting ready to fire your boss. Um, and that, so that clip just brought that to my mind. Uh, what did you think, Shaquita? Well, um, again, you know, I'm a big Muhammad Ali fan just because he refuses to be emasculated by white supremacy. And many times that's a position that you have to, to get into, quite frankly, when you're um, on a lot of these jobs um, and in the workplace. And it's amazing to me the arrogance that this guy had to sit there and tell him he needs to fire his cooks, he needs to fire his guards. And I mean, this was a reenactment. Uh, uh, it was a biopic 
where Muhammad Ali did play himself. But in this situation, the movie is true to life. I mean, told him who he could be affiliated with and then threw money up at him. And I, I can imagine that there are so many, you know, of our sports figures, our um, <clears throat> Fam the famous people in, in black society that are getting told the same kinds of things. You cannot associate with these people. You can't speak on that cause. And, and just everyday people in the workplace, we can't, you know, be ourselves. And I think it's important to, like you said, not only prepare to leave the plantation, but as black people, we have to have something that we um, have ownership over. It's not just about, um, you know, being able to be your own boss, but as a society, we have to be able to reflect who we are without being censored, whether that's working for a black owned company because we have more black businesses, investing with someone who's starting a black owned company so that you can be a partner and things of that nature. Absolutely. Um, you know, to be more specific, what the guy was saying, the this quote unquote boss was saying was, he said, don't associate with Malcolm X. Um, he said, fire the workers who are Muslims. I think it was a cook and a gardener um, and guards. They're all Muslims, so get rid of the Muslims. And then he said, you should even renounce um, your religion, renounce Islam. Um, I can't think of anything uh, more, what's the word? Uh, it's, it's egregious. Uh, because religion or your spiritual beliefs are so much a, the core of who you are. And somebody can think that because they give you a paycheck. They can tell you what to believe and who to be around. Um, so to make it a little bit more um, tangible, I wanted to say that um, I don't advocate people charging into their, um, their boss's office and being rude and then quitting um, and then throwing your, your family into a crisis. Mm. Uh, that, is not, that is not what we're talking about here. Um, this is a person who's confident um, that he is standing up for something. And I think he had enough confidence in himself that he would be okay after he left. And those are very key things. Now, not everybody can be as confident if they have not prepared themselves. There's some very, very tangible things that you need to do before you fire, you quote unquote, fire your boss. Um, just a quick note, um, at um, the Black Business School, Dr. Boyce Watkins and I have a course called oh, yeah. Exactly exactly this is called how to fire your boss and uh, you know the, the subtitle is something about getting off the, the corporate plantation um, and in that um, in that lecture series I actually discuss I think at least a third of it is talking about while you're still on the job what you need to be doing um, because the truth is not everybody can storm into the boss's office and um, just scream at them and then storm off because what you'll do then is you throw your family into a crisis um, and in no time, you'll be back somewhere else begging yet another massa for another job. So that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about some very, very, very planned, specific, intelligent moves. Exactly. And I mean, for me, you know, technology was an awesome move because the demand outweighs the supply for technologists. So it has given me so many options because again, power has to do with your options. So, you know, I'm able to demand respect. I'm able to make decisions about what I feel like I want to do with my schedule and my time. And that's why I have a techo.teachable.com to teach other people to do the same things. Because like you said, before you fire your boss, you want to save money. You want to um, be able to make sure you can keep the type of lifestyle that you want. And, and, um, and at a techo.teachable.com, I have your six-figure tech career because, you know, a six-figure salary can help you get in that position where you can leave your job. A flexible schedule will allow you to look around for those business opportunities you can invest in. But, you know, again, the whole situation um, – of our white supremacist society that we, we live in on, on a global level is that this man is sitting behind a desk and raising his voice at Muhammad Ali and telling him, I, I want you to listen and this is what I want you to do. Right. That's very damaging to um, a human psyche, the black male psyche, the black woman psyche. For someone, I mean, because this is what happens, you have to be subjugated and you have to think and act 
um, in the way that they feel is right for you. And, and, and they, even if they're not that overt, the overall um, tone and atmosphere many times on these um, jobs that, you know, you, I'm going to tell you what you need to do. And I want you to be quiet and listen. And if you don't do it, then there's going to be consequences. And then you have to sit there and say, okay, I've got to do what this person says. And that's what we as black people, if we're ever going to build or have anything for ourselves, we have to get out of that position. Absolutely. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm, I'm not sure people are aware of is that, um, you know, you and I uh, have uh, started a partnership. Uh, we're actually working on building a new platform. Um, it's called Married Women's Business, uh, marriedwomensbusiness.com. And actually people can go there and sign up ahead of time. Um, and guys, it's just basically in every, in every relationship that you build. Um, I, I've known Shaquita for less than a year, but when we met, um, you know, I, I got that she was an enterprising woman. She's authentic. Um, she's a married woman like me. Uh, <laughs> she loves her kids. She's a homeschooler like me. So we had a lot in common and we both care about black people. We care about the state of black America. And um, above all, we care about black families and black marriages. So this was an excellent partnership. Um, and um, this is what I encourage people to do. You don't have to do anything that goes necessarily away from who you are. Just focus on what it is that you're trying to accomplish um, and start building from there. And, um, and you'd be amazed at what you can do. So it's not about um, doing drastic things. I think if I can share just one thing, because I did buy my boss some years ago. Um, if I could share just one thing is you have to look at a lot of people's question is, uh, how am I going to start a business? I don't have the money for that. You have to look at your job if you still have one as the, 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 the financer or the creditor or whatever it is. It has to be the thing that's going to help you, uh, you know, it's going to be the stepping stone to help you get off of there. So it requires sacrifice, guys, okay? Um, for, for a while there, I couldn't get my hair and my nails done because all that money was going into building the next thing. Uh, but what I can say is it's been well worth it uh, because when you, when you know that you're making that sacrifice and it's for something bigger, it makes it all that much more worth it. Yeah, no, man, just to wrap it up, um, you know, for me, I've been able to be very comfortable while still investing in partnerships like ours and other business ventures. Um, because of you having a vision to me it starts with having a vision mm -hmm. and saying that listen you know it's just like the field slave to say i, I need to get off this plantation mm -hmm. and i'm gonna plot day and night and i'm gonna work with whoever i need to work with but i'm going to be free and that's why i love like harriet tubman they're like okay by law you're a slave you're three this is a human she's like whatever i'm not a slave and i'm out of here mm -hmm. and anybody who wants to go with me i'll come back and get you it's like that type of attitude, and that's the attitude that Muhammad Ali had. He says he, he thought he was the greatest before he ever was. It's just like the, the mindset set, the thoughts will you into this position. And I'm not saying just think and grow rich, so to speak, but it does start with the thought. Okay, you have to believe that you don't have to be controlled by these people. You have to believe that there is another way and you just need to find it. So that, that's the last word for me. Um, that's all I had to say to Shaquita. Um, and like I said, just encouraging people to just start wherever they are, you know. Um, and, and like you said, the mindset is the most important thing. Once you make up your mind, you'd be amazed at what you can get done. Absolutely. So thanks. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks, Noma, for having this excellent conversation with me. And we'll see you next time on Your Black Women.